Now we proceed to give a sketch of the proof of our result, but we have to talk about the partition problem with symmetries. And also we are going to talk how to solve the first step in Conti Terracini and Bertini's approach. That is, we are going to see how we obtain the solutions to weakly coupled systems. First, let me introduce this problem in a proper way. The problem that we are going to study is the following. We have, we fix a manifold which is Rn and we take n bigger than 2m. We are going to take the, um, the order m uh, polyharmonic operator. And we are going to fix also this group of symmetry. This is the orthogonal group in, in, uh, in n1 dimensions times the orthogonal group in n2 dimensions in such a way that n1 plus n2 gives n plus one. And then we consider a gamma invariant domain as I as I defined before. If we consider the Dirichlet problem with the polyharmonic operator, which is the time is Laplacian, having this nonlinearity, that is, this is the Q curator problem on Rm, and we look for a solution lying in this space. This is the space of, this is the closure of the infinite uh, functions with compact support um, under a suitable norm. I'm going to define this norm. The norm is this one. This is U minus Laplacian M U. And under this norm, this is a sublet space in such a way that the functions, let's say in a, in a not, not completely formal way, that these functions uh, are zero at the boundary of gamma. Not only the functions, but also all the derivatives of the order M. And also we are asking for a solution to be gamma invariant. If we have this, we can define again the infimum of this guy. This is the energy that is given by this norm. And we are looking for the infimum of all possible energies of solutions that are gamma invariant. When we have this kind of symmetries, this guy, as we will show, it's a thing. So what we are going to study and what we are going to solve is the gamma invariant partition problem, which means that, which asks for the existence of, well, let's say partition pro, the L partition, L gamma partition problem with this guy, a natural number. And, it, and this problem looks for L pairs of solutions and domains of Rn. Such that each gamma i is gamma invariant. U i is gamma invariant. solution of this equation attaining 
the minimum energy. And also we are looking for uh, in such a way that our N is a disjoint union of this omega I. And let's move this guy a little bit. And the sum of all possible energies, let's say the average energy, E equals one to L, is the infimum among every other such uh, any other family of such pairs. How do we solve it? We are going to follow the Conti, Terracini, and Bertini approach. That is, first, we have to study a system of L differential equations, a weakly coupled uh, system of differential equations that we state in this general way. We have here the M power of the Laplacian, the nonlinear term. So this guy here is the is actually the curvature problem on Rn plus coupling terms. Since we are looking for L equations, we are going to have L coupling terms with um, which are also nonlinear and they are critical because we are looking for these guys in such a way that the sum gives the, the critical sobel exponent. So the, this equation and also the couplings are given by a critical exponent nonlinearities. And we are going to consider the competitive case where these lambdas are less than zero. So our first theorem is as follows. Our first theorem is the following one. There exists a minimal energy, non-trivial, gamma invariant solution to problem to this problem. Actually, we were able to find an infinite number of, uh, of gamma invariant solutions. Let's say, since we are taking um, since we're taking U1 up to UL, we define this tuple to be the solution, okay? So we were able to prove that there exists an infinite number of these guys, of these solutions, gamma invariant solutions to this problem. And one of them attains the minimum energy So this is the first step in Conti, Terracini, and Bertini's approach. And this was our first theorem. The second theorem that we are going to study was how do we obtain phase separation? So we have to study this system for different lambdas, ij for different uh, competitive coefficients, tending to minus infinite. How do we solve this? The sketch of the proof of, of this theorem is, is really simple. 
we have a variational approach. So we were we consider this Hilbert space, which is L times this Sobolev space. And for any function lying here, we define this norm. This is the sum of the energies, which is u delta m u to the power one half. And what is what it is interesting of this problem is that uh, this is a variational problem. So if we define the following energy function, which is one half of this norm, and then we take this nonlinear operator. This is reflecting that this, um, this is reflecting the part of the Q curvature problem. U to star M. And also this, uh, this energy functional has to reflect the coupling terms. So we are going to add minus the sum of all possible coupled terms, the integral lambda ij u j alpha ij q i beta ij. So this is a variational approach because u is a solution to the system, which system is system PL if and only if U is a critical point of J. Okay, so this is the variational approach. But we were not looking for any critical point. We were looking for gamma invariant critical points. So we restrict our attention to seek for critical points lying in the subspace of gamma invariant functions. If we obtain a critical point lying in this space, it is not trivial and it is not obvious that these critical points to this function are restricted to this space is going to be is going to give a critical point in all in the whole space in order that this critical point gives a solution. So there is a pretty nice theorem, a pretty nice general theorem, which is Palais Palais critical symmetry. Principle which says that U critical point of J in this subspace, then U is a critical point. of J in the whole space. And then it is going to be a solution to our problem. The variational method that we use follows Clap and Zurkin variational method.
This was developed in 2019. And in their approach, Clapan uh, Clapan Sulkin, they look for solutions relying on this uh, on this subset, which is the use in this space, such that each of the components is not zero, and the partial derivative of u applied to i equals zero to all i one to l. And then they consider this space, but uh, this set, but this set, it is not as in a classical, uh, in a class, in the classical approach, it is not a manifold. In, uh, in the classical approach, this set is always, uh, well, not always, but many times it is diffeomorphic, radially diffeomorphic to the sphere in our solid space. Here, it is not clear that this is happening. So they use another kind of set which is more or less uh, related with the sphere in, uh, in this space. But instead, since we are having L times this space, they consider L times the sphere. So they consider actually U to be the points in this toro right in such a way that there exists a nice projection to this space in such a way that you can be projected to n so clap and sulkin looked for solutions lying in this U. And also they look for these solutions lying in this U because this U was a natural constraint. That is critical points lying in U will give critical points lying in the sublet space with symmetries. And this will induce with the Palais critical symmetry, uh, critical, um, critical symmetry principle, they induce a solution to our problem having the desired symmetry. So this was their approach. And to have this approach, they needed topology plus a compactness condition. So I will talk about the compactness condition because it is, it is a classical condition. The compactness is that our functional satisfies the palais male condition in the whole Rn. What is a palais male condition? The palais male condition, J satisfies the palais male condition gamma invariant at the level tau, tau in a, in, a, in a real number, if every sequence every sequence uk lying in this space such that J UK converge to tau and the derivative of these guys converge to zero in, in this space. If every such a sequence of gamma invariant, if we are looking for gamma invariant solutions, if each of these sequence has a convergence 
subsequent. So what we need in order to apply the variational method, we need to, um, we wanted to prove that J satisfies the Palesme condition for any tau. And with this, we, are, uh, we, were, going, we were able to obtain an infinite number of solutions using the variational method developed by Clapp and Sulkin. And also we were able to attain the least energy solution. So this is a compactness criteria. This is a compactness result, uh, compactness. Compact, compactness condition. And it is not obvious how to obtain it. So how do we obtain this kind of compactness? We look uh, we see that all the orbits, all the gamma orbits has have positive dimension. And so if we consider this um, this group, which was O N Y times O N two, so that the that the orbits are spheres or product of the spheres. If we consider this group acting on the sobolet space, on Sn, this condition using um, uh, a bayan bogons argument, This embedding is compact by a variable uh, But also, I, as I told you before, the problem on Rn and the problem on Sn are equivalent via the stereographic projection. So we have here an isometry. And this isometry induces another isometry here. So this embedding, this embedding is also compact. This is the approach given by Dean. He wanted to, to use the compactness of Sn or use the compactness of Sn in order to restore in, in some sense the compactness on the space on the sublevel space of Rn. So the uh, the result by Epeya Bogon said that this embedding are compact and we can rise this embedding to the whole Rn use via the stereographic projection. So if we have a compact embedding, then one sees that every such sequence satisfying this is bounded in this guy. And as it is bounded in this guy, it converges strongly in this space and weakly again in this sublet space. So weak convergence plus a strong convergence in this L2 star space gives a strong convergence in this space. And that is how we, we prove the compactness condition. 